Oh hey folks, it's that special time of year when people across the political spectrum join hands and celebrate this experiment in self-governance by rationally discussing the principles and casting their earnest votes for the man or woman that best embodies the ideals of American liberty. <laughs> no, what am I thinking? That's not how elections go down here. Uh, no, our, our elections culminate in a frenzy of tribalist fervor marked by no holds barred ends justify the means style. Uh, and it's no secret that the ministries of truth, otherwise known as social media, have intentionally used their influence to sway elections. And recently, they're cranking it up to 11. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. Instagram is now blocking the use of any new hashtags those hash browns at the end, yeah. to suppress recent Biden scandals, and YouTube is pulling any content that's even a little bit critical of his campaign. Mr. Guns and Gear is posting a, recently posted a video detailing Sniffy Joe's gun control plans, and, uh, it was promptly removed by YouTube, and without explanation. Andrew also analyzed Biden's ban plan, and thankfully that video hasn't been taken down. Yet. If you'd like to see it, we'll toss a link somewhere up around here, but it's wrong for YouTube to silence Mr. Guns and Gear. And we think what he has to say is important. Every gun owner needs to understand what exactly Biden has planned. So with this permission, we're reposting the video, and we hope other channels do the same. Can't stop the signal now. Welcome back everybody, my name is Mike. For those that don't know, I run the Mr. Guns and Gear channel and recently I put up a video that you guys are about to see right after this comment here from me. And basically I just went through Joe Biden's plan for gun control should he become president in 2021. I just outlined his proposals and what they actually mean to everyday American gun owners. And YouTube removed the video, I appealed it, uh, an actual human reviewed it and backed up their decision to remove it saying it violated the community guidelines. Now I've read all the community guidelines. There's absolutely nothing in my video that violates those community guidelines. I think my opinion is that uh, the truth just kind of hurt and they realized the video could damage um, Joe Biden's chances for president should it go viral and uh, they just removed it. So I urged all my followers to upload it wherever they could. I told everyone download it, re-upload it. The folks at Arfcom were nice enough to reach out and ask if they could upload it as well and I 100% appreciate them doing that and that's the video that you guys are about to see right now. Welcome back everybody. Unfortunately today we don't have like a really fun video with lots of shooting and all of those sorts of things like we typically do here but today we're going to be going over Joe Biden's plan uh, for gun control should he become the president of the United States in 2021. So everything I have on this board here is taken directly from the Biden Harris website. None of it is made up by me. There will be a link down below in the video description where you guys can verify everything I'm saying. Now some of the language on the uh, Biden Harris website doesn't really explain what it would really mean to real people. Um, so I'm somebody who is makes a living, of course, understanding federal gun laws. I am a federal firearms license, license holder. I also have a special occupational tax for machine guns, silencers, etc. This is what I do. Okay. Um, so I will also put any uh, pertinent links to the ATF descriptions of items that I'm talking about down below in the video description so you guys can actually verify what I'm saying is valid. Okay. Uh, so again, making this video, not so much for my core audience that already understands this, but so that my core audience can share this with their network on Facebook, Instagram, wherever they may be. So that way people have a better understanding of what these people are actually trying to do and how they're actually trying to make literally millions of Americans felons overnight. Uh, that's just the, that's just the starting point. All right. So we're going to walk you through it here point by point. If you guys can't read my board, don't worry about it. They're notes for me. They're not for you, but this is our whiteboard of knowledge for folks who are new here. And we're going to walk through it point by point, trying to make it as concise as possible, yet still understandable. Okay, so the first point over on their website is that they want to ban the manufacture and sale of assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Now the term assault weapon and high capacity are both in quotation marks. Um, so on their site, they're saying that they are going to use the 1994, what's called the Clinton gun ban, um, to as a baseline, but they're going to make it harder for manufacturers to go around it. Um, so for folks that don't know, a lot of what 
what people would classically recognize as assault rifles were made from 2004 to, two, excuse me, 1994 to 2004 during the assault weapons ban. And basically, the manufacturers just had to change some features. Uh, the Biden plan is saying that they're going to make that harder going forward in the future. So uh, two things we want to talk about here. First up is assault weapons. So a lot of the things that were covered during the assault weapons ban um, were things like a retractable stock. So if it had a stock that could go forward and out, uh, then it would be an assault weapon. If it had the ability to have a vertical foregrip, then it would be an assault weapon. If it had the ability to have a flash hider, uh, so that way your flash is mitigated and you don't blind yourself in low light and those sorts of things, it also makes it a little bit quieter. If it had that capability, then it became an assault weapon overnight. If it had the ability to mount a bayonet to it, then it would automatically become an assault weapon. Now this scary gun here looks like an assault weapon to some folks out there, but it's just a basic uh, AR-15. This is literally the most popular rifle in America. There are more of these in America than any other type of rifle. It's semi-automatic, meaning that one trigger pull is one bullet down range. It's not fully automatic or anything like that. Um, it's just your basic AR-15. There's a lot of other guns that would meet the assault weapon uh, criteria as well that don't look black and scary um, but I just want to use this one as an example um, of what they would be trying to outlaw additionally they're talking about high capacity magazines so what they mean by that um, is that it holds 10 or more rounds or has the ability to hold 10 or more rounds so for example this is a Glock 19, again, the most popular handgun in America. I use, I'm using this for a reason. Um, just like the AR-15 is the most common rifle in America, this is the most common pistol in America. So um, in some states, these are actually sold with 10 round mags. However, it has the ability to take high capacity magazines, therefore it would be on their list. So it comes with 15 round magazines standard from the factory. Um, but again, in some states, it's only sold with 10 round to make it compliant, but since it can hold magazines over 10 rounds, then it would still be an assault weapon, according to them. I should also point out that um, they're trying to say that high capacity magazines, the manufacturer and sale of those would be banned. Well, again, our Glock here comes with three magazines from the factory, standard. That's how it comes across the world, not just in America. So they're gonna try to ban those. Now we'll get into why that becomes important here probably in the next bullet. Before we move on, I wanna go ahead and thank the sponsor of today's video because YouTube will surely demonetize this video. And uh, the good folks over at Acre Gold have taken it upon themselves to sponsor this video and I do appreciate that. So the way Acre Gold works is a little bit different than a lot of other gold investment companies. Basically, you put it aside a certain amount of months, say let's just hypothetically say $50 a month. And then when, once it gets to a certain amount of gold that you set up in your plan, then a piece of gold gets sent out to you discreetly in the mail. And basically it's just a way to put a little bit away, a little bit away, a little bit away. And then you have an insurance policy against uh, the fiat currency that we have here in America. And, uh, what might happen should these things go into effect within our economy. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to continue on here. Um, it also says that they are going to place an executive ban on imports. Now, generally speaking, that's not super important because in America, quote unquote, assault weapons, the vast majority of them are made in America. There's only one AR-15 manufacturer, major AR-15 manufacturer that I'm aware of that's, you know, located outside of America. And some of the other guns out there, ancillary ones, um, are made in Israel, uh, Romania, etc. That said, that's not the majority of quote unquote assault weapons uh, within America. The majority of them are made in America, but they're saying that they are going to ban them by executive order. So just take that for what it's worth. That also includes magazines. Now in this case, there are a lot, a ton, tons. I don't know the percentage, but a high percentage of quote unquote high capacity magazines that are sold in America, owned in America, come from overseas, predominantly Korea, uh, European nations, uh, Israel again, and many other places around the world. So they're going to ban those um, just by fiat executive decree. So the way they want to do this, and this is key to understanding it for a lay person, is that they want to regulate them under the NFA. So there's a two part plan here. Number one, they're going to have a, all of these things, which I'll get into here in a second, or a mandatory buyback program. So a buyback program, uh, for folks that don't know, is the government attempting to buy back something it never owned with the money that it forcibly seizes from the United States taxpayers. So that's what they're attempting to do. So let's say, just a total hypothetical, before 2020, this particular rifle would cost you anywhere from six to $800, depending on when you bought it, um, and say that they were going to put up $800 to buy it back. Again, they're going to steal money from taxpayers who have earned it, and then they're going to 
buy something back that they never owned in the first place. And if you don't want to go through with that as a free American, then your other options are to have your items regulated under the National Firearms Act. So the National Firearms Act, for those that don't know, um, is what regulates suppressors, short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, um, machine guns in some cases, it depends, um, and other items like that, destructive devices like Molotov cocktails, incendiary devices, bombs, etc., all file under the NFA. So with the NFA comes a few things. Number one is going to be mandatory registration. So any item that is on the NFA right now, so if you own a short barrel rifle or a short barrel shotgun or whatever the case may be, um, it's registered. You have to pay a $200 tax stamp for it. it you have to go through an additional background check. It takes anywhere from six to 12 months. And um, that item is publicly registered. So anyone who owns these items, you can go on and do a FOIA request and you can find out where the item is stored, who owns it, who it's registered to, and what address it can be found at. So they want to make any of these items, so like IE, your Glock 19 would have to be an NFA item. You'd have to pay $200 just to be able to continue to own it, go through the increased background check, engrave it, again, uh, in, in addition to the engraving that's already on there, then register that publicly for everyone to see. The same would be true for every magazine that you own, which is over 10 rounds. So let's just say you have three AR-15 magazines, 30 rounds standard capacity magazines. You'd have to do the exact same thing, get a tax stamp for each of them, engrave them, uh, register them publicly so that way everyone in America can find out where your magazines are um, and know how many you have, how many guns you have, and uh, just what you have within your own home. That's mandatory per the NFA. And that would be, again, per gun and per mag. So think about that. You know, you're an average law-abiding American gun owner who just went out and bought a Glock 19 for home defense. You're talking $800 now. So $200 for this, $200 for each magazine. That's not including the fingerprints that you also have to get. I should point that out. It's not including the additional engraving costs that you're gonna have to get for each of these items, depending on where you live, engraving, per NFA standards, which is very specific, costs generally between $20 and $50 per item. So minimum, we're talking to $800 for the Glock 19 that you own that you're gonna have to spend if you don't want to have the government quote unquote buy back your Glock 19 that they never owned in the first place and they have absolutely no right to do so under the Second Amendment. All right. So additional, additionally, it's going to require background checks universally. So right now, uh, they claim, the Biden campaign claims that one in five guns uh, sold in America does not go through a background check. I have no idea where they got that statistic. It could be true. It might not be true. Some states, depending on where you live, don't require background checks for private sales. Some do. It's kind of a, a mixed match there. Um, but that will ex include, rather, uh, family members, inheritance, things like that. So uh, depending on where you grow up, a lot, I know a lot of folks grew up hunting and they would take um, you know, their dad's rifle or their dad's shotgun hunting when they were 16 or 18, depending on whatever uh, state laws, wherever you may live. And you would go out to actually feed your family, go out hunt, get food for your family. And that's a completely normal thing that's been going on in America since you know before America was formally adopted as America. This would not allow you to do that. So again, with everything under the NFA, we have to circle back to that, right? So let's just say, hypothetically, this particular rifle has a barrel of 16 inches. Let's say it had a barrel of 15 and a half inches. That would put it under the NFA, under the clause that we currently have. Under their laws in the future, this would be the, under the NFA with the 16 inch barrel. So if, unless I have a trust or some other mechanism that allows multiple people to own the firearm, if I were to, if this gun was registered to me under the NFA and I left and this rifle was with my wife or my teenage child or whatever the case may be, and they had access to this rifle, technically they would be violating the National Firearms Act. That is a penalty of 10 years in prison and or $10,000 fine. Um, so with that, you know, you can't transfer it like you have with simple transfer in most states right now. So if you leave the house with this item that is now an NFA item and they are in possession of it and you are not there, you know, in possession of it, then it has become an NFA violation again. So that's what they're requiring here with these two steps here, which is insane. Again, getting back to the fundamental point that I made in the intro of this video, millions of American law-abiding citizens will become felons overnight should their plans go into motion, okay? Uh, hate crime loophole. So they're trying to close the hate crime loophole. That's what they say. They're very specific about this on their website that they want to include non-felons. So right now, depending on the state, depending on the situation, 
typically felons cannot own firearms. Um, and because of this, um, hate crime in certain states is not a felony per se. A lot of times a hate crime can be a misdemeanor. So they specifically want to apply the felon st status for firearms to hate crimes, even if they're misdemeanors. So you can be a non-felon, yet be prohibited from the rest of your life for owning a firearm. That's what they're trying to do. It's in there. Go ahead and look it up. All right, they want to close the Charleston loophole. So right now, um, when you go to purchase a firearm at a federal firearms license uh, dealer, they're going to run a background check on you. It's called the NICS check. Um, if that NICS check, and this is state dependent as well, it really is, um, but in most states, if that NICS check doesn't come back within three days saying yes or no, then it's an automatic you pass. Um, so they're going to extend that from three days to 10 days. That's their plan. Um, again, a lot of the reason that people have issues with NICS check is that typically they have common names. I don't know if you guys can hear it. My neighbors are having a party. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> But they're out here watching this video as well from the dock. Either way. Um, so they want to, a lot, a lot of times rather, people get denied for next checks or next checks don't come back in time because they have common names. So John Smith, Thomas Smith, Thomas Cooper, any kind of common name out there. If there's a bunch of people that have that name, there's going to be some people who are prohibited with that name and some people who aren't prohibited with that name. That tends to cause a delay. Now, 98.9% .9 of the time, it will come back within three days for the right person, but sometimes it doesn't. And in that case, again, they're going to extend that three days to 10 days before the firearm is transferred over to that person. And next up, they want to end online sales of guns and ammunition. So again, just to make it a little bit more understandable for folks who have never purchased a firearm, right now, if you purchase a firearm online, it doesn't actually get shipped to your house. It gets shipped to your local gun store. They, put, they conduct the background check, the next check that we already talked about, and then the firearm is transferred to you after you fill out your ATF form of 4473. Um, so you, you, the same is not true with ammunition. Outside of California, ammunition can be mailed to your house right now, anywhere in the country, again, outside of California. Now, this could be a huge deal. It could be not a huge deal. Some folks, where they live, their local gun shops, don't charge exorbitant prices and you know ammunition and guns are relatively close to what you could find online however for the vast majority of people in america right now online firearms and online ammunition is much cheaper than what you would pay at your local gun store again that's not always the case some folks like shopping in a gun store it doesn't matter this is going to eliminate that option for millions and millions of americans so obviously not a good thing for the industry not a good thing for really anyone outside of, I guess, local gun shops. Maybe they support it. I don't know. Um, additionally, next up, they're going to increase the amount of people who are going to become ineligible to own. So um, they don't really go into specifics on this because I don't think they want folks to understand how you become ineligible to own a firearm. Now, the one thing they do cite is that they cite domestic violence. So Depending on where you live um, in America, some states already do this, some states don't. If you are in possession of a firearm and you get charged with domestic violence, your firearms can be temporarily taken. Um, now, whether or not that's constitutional or not, that's a video for another day. But in some states, they can be taken uh, as a safety procedure until your case is adjudicated. Um, that's what they point to as their example. However, a huge one that a lot of people don't understand, particularly now in 2020, is that if you use marijuana, you cannot own a firearm. Not at all, not federally. And there are many states across America, I know people are going to say, oh, well, in my state, it's legal. It doesn't matter. Federally, it's not. If you have a marijuana card, a license, medical prescription, or if you just went into your local you know, dealer uh, legally in your state anyway and purchased it, but you had to use your ID as a way to check who you were and they actually filed that information. If that's the case, then you have just become un illegal and unlawful possessor of a firearm. So if that happens, then they would send, of course, men from the government armed with guns to come take your guns. So that's what they want to do there in terms of increasing the amount of people who are ineligible to own. I just picked out marijuana as an example. You can check out the Form 4473. You will see there are a ton of other reasons why you would become a person ineligible to own a firearm. Again, I just picked that out for brevity's sake. All right, so it's going to require owner, owners to notify the federal government or law enforcement when your guns are stolen. So. This is onerous for many other reasons. 
uh, besides the one I'm going to get on, but I just kind of picked this one off the top of my head because it applies to fam some of my family members. So some of my family members, I'm from New England for folks that don't know, and uh, in that case, it's very common for people there to have a home in New England and then one in Florida or one in Texas or whatever the case may be, or one in Arizona, um, and they have multiple homes. So they only live in each one for six months, five months, seven months, whatever the case may be. So let's say most states that have this as a law have it within 48 or 72 hours. Let's say that becomes federal law and you have to report a firearm within 72 hours. Well, let's say you don't live at that home and somebody broke in, stole that firearm, and you don't find out until six months later when you actually go there for the winter or for the summer, depending on whatever the case may be. Well, guess what? When you go to notify them at this point, it's been longer than that 72 hour established gap and now you're a felon, right? <laughs> Just think that's again, what I'm getting at in terms of how unreasonable this may be. Now on paper, that no, mandating notifying that your firearms are stolen, a lot of people are like, well, that's reasonable. We'd want to know if firearms aren't in the right hands of the right people. But if you actually look into the details of why these things aren't law, there's reason for it, right? There's due process that has to be afforded to American citizens. And this is depriving them of that and just assuming that they know their firearm is stolen. Um, I, people who work on you know job sites for a long period of time, a lot of them will set up a trailer at their job site. Well, what if they went home for the weekend and their trailer got robbed and then they come back and what if the law is 48 instead of 72 hours in this example? Well, then they just became felons as soon as they go to report it. And what ends up really happening then is that people don't actually report when their firearms are stolen. Because I don't know anyone who's ever had a firearm stolen that didn't report it. I literally don't know anyone. Everyone reports it because we want to know that if our guns were stolen and it comes up in a crime scene somewhere, that serial number will be matched and we'll get our guns back, right? It makes no sense. There's no reason not to report a firearm stolen if you are an honest person. But to do this makes criminals out of honest people. All right, continuing on. Uh, they want to eliminate ghost guns, what they call ghost guns. Okay, so right now what they will typically point to are what are called 80% firearms, meaning that they are firearms that are made by a company and they're not finished. So the ATF has a lot of different definitions of what a firearm is. Sometimes it will be allowing the trigger components to be installed. Sometimes it will be um, allowing a magazine to be inserted. It, it varies tremendously by the type of firearm, but regardless, you can buy these kits right now in America that require anywhere from four to 10 hours of work, sometimes more, sometimes like 40, depending on the actual firearm itself, hours of work to complete into a working firearm. Now, I should point out that since America has become America, it has always been legal, always. There's never been an exception to this for Americans to make their own firearms as long as they're not making them to sell right? But they've always been allowed to make their own firearms for their own personal use. That's always been the case. It's never not been the case. So what this wants to do is stop that. Now, a couple of things to point out is that, again, we are in 2020 right now. You can go online and buy a 3D printer for $150 and you can print out a Glock frame. Now on Glocks, for example, or any semi-automatic handgun, this portion right here, which has our serial number in it, that is the firearm, according to the ATF. You can print this out in under 10 minutes right now for with a 3D printer that costs less than $200. So you're trying to tell me that the ghost guns that you're going after, which are prefabricated, are any different than what you could build, again, with a 3D printer from Amazon? It seems a little bit crazy, but that's what they're trying to ban. Now, of course, if they really do that, what are they actually doing? They're banning lawful users from doing that because criminals will not be dissuaded by their law against ghost guns. They're still going to go out and buy that $200 printer and 3D print their own gun. Same thing, you can also 3D print magazines for folks that don't know that. You absolutely can. And then additionally, going forward, or kind of going backwards, excuse me, um, you know, there's always been the ability for Americans to have forges. I know a guy with a forge who lives not too far from here. And if you have a forge, anybody who understands what a forge is, um, you can make firearms very, very easily. Additionally, even if you don't want to go through all the hassle of having a forge, you can go literally to Home Depot or Lowe's with some pipes, some nails, and some wood and easily build a shotgun for under $30. There's lots of how-to videos on YouTube. If you guys are on YouTube right now watching this video, there are literally how-to videos on this topic right now. Just search it in your search box and you're gonna see it for under $30. You can build all kinds of firearms with pipe, nails, and wood from Lowe's or Home Depot. And again, that's perfectly legal, always has been. No matter what kind of legislation they try to pass to circumvent that, it's not going to change the fact that it's true. There's always going to be pipes. There's always going to be nails. There's always going to be wood. It's simply absurd. Remember, the Second Amendment is not about hunting. The Second Amendment is not about self-defense from criminals. The Second Amendment is about self-defense of individual liberty from a tyrannical state.
There's no other reason that you could say that you would want these things other than to increase the balance of power between the state and the individual. These are not going to cut down on crimes. All they do is prohibit law-abiding, ordinary Americans from owning the firearms that they choose to own as they would of their own free will. All right. I'm sure we've gone on long enough. At that point, guys, we are going to wrap it up. And uh, that's it. Again, if you guys already know all this stuff, good on you. Share it with your friends. This is what these people want to do. So to, to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. The fact of the matter is they should be illegal, period. And this is a choice that we have to make over the next few weeks. Do you want millions of people becoming felons overnight in America, normal, ordinary Americans who own the most common <laughs> firearms out there, Glock 19s? And this is, again, just an example, your AR-15s, your AK-47s, semi-automatic, might I add. Uh, do you want those people to become felons overnight? I don't. I certainly don't. I also don't want the balance of power between the state and the individual to change any worse than it already is. And uh, with that, I suppose we'll end it. If you like this type of video, go ahead and hit subscribe. Typically, we do a little bit more fun stuff, but I think this message needed to get out. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.